on three, beast mode. One, two, three. Beast mode. No, come on. One, two, three. Beast mode. Come on. One, two, three. Beast mode. Don't give up. Don't give up on your dreams. Don't go, go pick it back up. There's a dream you left two, three years ago. Somebody told you you couldn't do it and you internalized that foolishness. Stop listening to the haters. Shut them down. Shut them up. You want to shut your haters up? How do you do it? You do it by being successful. You don't do it by falling into their traps, doing what they want you to do, put your head down. You don't do it by not being successful. Let me tell you what I learned. Nothing succeeds like success. And so pick your dream back up. Pick your goals back up. Kill a, kill, kill a noise. Shut them down. And surround yourself with people who will help you, who will help you, who will speak life into you and not death. People who will speak life into you and help you to get from where you are to where you want to be. It's your boy, E.T. Remember, remember, I don't care nothing about your cab. So I got one too. Listen to me. You have the opportunity right now to make the rest of your life the best of your life. If you wake up at 3.30, some other kid's getting up at 3 and he's got 30, 30 minutes on you today. I need you to do me a huge favor. I need you not only to want to be a beast, I need you to live in beast mode. Because if you live in beast mode, you'll have what other people don't have. Listen to me very closely. Not only will you have what other people don't have, you'll do what other people can't do. So what is it? What is that one thing that you're saying that I am going to get this thing done and I'm going to make my dreams become a reality? Everyone wants to be a beast until it's time to do a real beast do. Everybody wants to be a beast. Everybody wants to make their dreams become a reality. There's no one sitting in this room who said, I want to procrastinate. I don't want to get it done. I don't want to get to the next level. No, every person in this room, not only do you want your dreams to become a reality, you deserve for your dreams to become a reality. This is important. Seasons are always temporary. Say it. Crisis is not a permanent condition. It's just a season. And the key to life is what you have to do is organize yourself to outlast the season that's all as long as you're average you're going to get what average people get if you get to that point where you do exactly what you say you're going to do you're going to get to the next level that no one can do it for you but you it's not over until i win life has taught me that you will grow through what you go through life has taught me that you will grow through what you go through. Life has taught me for every level, there's another devil. Life has taught me the depth of your struggle will determine the height of your success. Everybody's got a dream. Everybody's got a goal. Everybody wants something in life but many of you in this room right now, your beast mode is idle. Your beast mode is not turned on. And when you leave this place, I'm telling you, your life is going to go to a whole other level if you can learn to turn that switch on and keep that switch on. I outlasted the pain. You're saying, I've got dreams, I have goals, there are things that I want to accomplish, I'm not satisfied. Like, I don't sleep well at night. Like, like E.T., e. I, I dream it, E.T., I want it, E.T. Let me tell you something. If you get to that point, if you get to that point where you do exactly what you say you're going to do, you're going to get to the next level. As an individual, I need you to get your schedule up. I need you to get your life up. I need you to get your words up. I need you to get your heart up. I need you to get your action up. I need you to get to a place that every single thing that you do is phenomenal so that the life you want to live, you can actually live that life.
Everybody wants to be number one. Everybody wants to be the best. Everybody wants to succeed. Everybody wants to have to be and do what they feel they've been called to do. The challenge becomes most of us, when it's time to do what beasts do, we don't do it. I need you to put this down, put this down, put this down. Because what you're going to discover as you're going towards your dream, as you're going towards your goal, they're going to be, they're going to, man, so many distractions. There are going to be so many people that, haters, so many people that come up against you. So many obstacles, so many trials, so many tribulations. And when people ask me, E.T., like for real, for real, E., I know you can give me 20 things that you've done to help yourself to become successful. But E.T., I just need like one or two. Can you give me one or two? And one of the things I tell people is, I outlasted the pain. I outlasted the pain. I need you to recycle your pain. When I was sleeping in those abandoned buildings, I kept telling myself, one day you'll be a homeowner. Every time I walked into that abandoned building, I told myself that this might be your current circumstances, but this will not be how the story ends. All you have to do, E.T., is to survive today. When they kicked me out of school, I knew that I would not be a high school dropout for the rest of my life. I knew I got to get through this one day. Me and my mom been through a lot. My mom and I have gone months and almost years of not talking to each other, but every single day I kept telling myself, one day I'll have a, a great relationship with my mom again. One day. Well, I didn't grow up with my biological father. He wasn't into my, in my life until I was 30 years old. But I told myself, today your father is not in your life, but one day. And so every single day when I wake up homeless, one day. Every single day when I woke up in that abandoned building, one day, one day is going to be E.T.'s day, but that day can't come if I give up today. So every single day when I woke up, I kept telling myself, today might not be the day, but soon it will be my day and I will recycle my pain. Say, so what do you mean, E.T., you recycled your pain? I turned homelessness into a book. I turned my father not being in my life to a book. I turned an estranged relationship with my mom into a book. I turned being homeless into a book. I turned being a high school dropout into a bestseller. And not only do they sell it in America, they sell it across the world. What will you do with your pain? Will you let it break you or will you let it redefine? I outlasted the pain. What I see is the one common denominator of people that are successful over a lifetime is the sustained hunger. Hunger is the number one factor. You need to be good at pattern recognition and that's what gets somebody strong at anything. I mean, you look at, you know, why is Amazon doing so well? He realized one pattern was valued over anything else, convenience. Right? If you look at Tom Brady, friend of mine, he, he's got pattern recognition like nobody else at 43 years old. He's able to do things no one dreamed could be done. He's got more Super Bowl rings than any team. See, what do they see that none of us see? What's the pattern? Then you gotta learn pattern utilization. It's one thing to see it, it's another thing to use it. And then if you're good after a while, you get to pattern creation. It's like if you learn to play the piano, most people play other people's music. And then there's a point you've learned so much that you're able to create really comes down to anyone can learn anything if it's important enough to you. So it's like my drive is not just for me. That wouldn't be enough because it's easy to meet your own needs. It's not that difficult. But if you can find something that you care about more than yourself, your daughter, your son, your family, your business, your mission, your community, whatever it is, that's really the secret to energy and vitality and strength and really learning. And one of the things I want to do with people during this challenge is Take things that seem so complex and make them so simple so you do it. Get it really simple, things you can do right now to change your life. You can go to experience it that day, and then you get momentum. Day one, day two, day three, day four, and all of a sudden now, what used to be hard to do is easy to do. And I think for anyone, you gotta understand, anyone can learn anything if you can just break it down to its simple core, and that's what I try to do most. 
And I'm just not willing to settle for a life without passion and aliveness. That's just like, there's so much to learn. There's so much to grow. There's so much to give. And I'm, I'm wired to grow and give. And I, I, I think anybody that's wired to grow and give is gonna have a really fulfilling life. It doesn't matter what you choose to do, you're gonna be alive. A year ago, people thought we were coming out of, you know, got vaccines now and we're coming out of COVID and it's gonna be all over now. People were excited. But now after going through two years of this, there's a lot of people now that no longer have a compelling future. Like, you know, people talking about New Year's resolutions, most people don't even have one. Because it's like, they never followed through anyway, right? But at least they had something to look forward to. They're starting to get into learned helplessness. Learned helplessness is is when something is so bad over and over again, you start thinking the problem's permanent. No problem is permanent. Or you start thinking the problem's pervasive because I haven't handled my finances, my whole world's over. Or because my relationship's bad, my whole world's over. Your life is bigger than that. My goal right now is to shake that up for people. People need a new perspective and you can't do it by just sitting and thinking. You got to move your body. You got to change your energy and your focus. But if I get you into a higher state of being mentally, emotionally, physically, then all of a sudden you start remembering who you are and you start coming up with answers that you never even thought were possible before. The idea of remembering who you are is something incredibly powerful. There was a uh, Batman cartoon where he gets amnesia and he gets put in like a, a camp, basically a work camp and he can't get out and he he feels stuck and weak and you know afraid and then something happens i don't remember what triggers his memory and he remembers that he's batman just in remembering that he's batman he then takes the actions to fight his way out look i know it's a cartoon but that has always resonated with me and whenever i'm feeling anxious about something i always tell myself remember who you are but you're really talking about the most important concept in lasting change, identity. We all define ourselves in certain ways. So you start where you are and you do what's in front of you, you do what's next and you keep growing until you start to discover, hey, this is my real passion. And it can change. People go for five, six, seven years and then they usually question their business, their career, their, their body, their relationships. And then one of two things happens. They change direction and feel renewed, or they go, no, I got a great deal here. What the hell's wrong with me? And they recommit and they get stronger. But that's life. And if you don't grow, I don't give a damn how much you got going for you, you're gonna be miserable. I think as early on, I realized that, you know, one of the things you have to understand about life is everything changes and everything ends. And that kind of sounds heavy on the front end, but it's a truth. If everything changes and everything ends, number one, it should make you appreciate what you have right now. And then my view is what's next is always better. If I make it so, it's my job to make it so. And I think that's how we have to navigate. But most of us, most of us have been conditioned not to to take a risk. People ask me all the time, what does it take to be happy? And I always tell them it's really simple. One word, progress. You have gone too far. You've invested too much time. You've given too much to quit now. You put too much time into it, too much effort. You've cried too many tears, right? You've gone, you've gone without eating. You have, you have invested too much to walk away at this point, all right? So we all in, baby. Now it's time to get the reward. It's about momentum. You got to keep it 100. You got to be true to you. And I'm tired of people emailing me, telling me what somebody told them they can't and can't do. Listen to me. The only thing you need to write your book, the only thing you need to do to finish the GED, I'm telling the book now, I'm telling the book. The only thing you need to do to get your four-year degree, the only thing you need to do to get your master's, the only thing you need to do is get your PhD, and is to believe in your dreams and stop listening to others. You're about to get certain things just because of the effort you put in, the time you put in. You're about to get a reward. Are you hearing me? You're about to get a reward, baby. So don't quit. Don't give up. There are some blessings that come in life after regulation. They come in overtime. They come in extra innings. So for some of y'all, you're going to have to learn to wrestle with it. You're going to have to learn to fight with it. That's what wrestling means. That's what I'm talking about. You're going to have to put in a little bit more sweat, a little bit more blood, a little bit more tears, but you got to wrestle with it. I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. Meaning that I'm, we gonna, we can, we going to do this thing all night long. We're going to do it all night long, but I'm, I'm telling you that I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. But you got to you gotta fight with that thing and tell that thing, you will quit before I quit. You'll give up before I give up. 
You fight your way through this one, but you do not quit. You do not give up on your marriage. Do not quit school. Do not quit on your goal, your dream. You keep going and not just don't quit. We're not talking about not quitting. We're talking about taking the prize home. Let me tell you something, what hurt people do, hurt people, hurt people. Don't even take it personal. When they try to strip you, they're not stripping you because they don't like you. They stripping you because somebody stripped them. Hurt people, hurt people. And so I need you to do me a favor. Never, ever, never, ever, never, ever, never, ever let somebody else, their reality for you, become your reality for you, all right? You ain't no boy no more. This ain't no base. This ain't no, I want to go party. You've given up that right when you had kids. Hey, party's over with out of time. Not time to be partying no more. Now it's time to create a legacy now. You had your fun. Now get your work. Now build a legacy. You don't work for nobody else. You work for your mama. You work for your sister. You work for your aunts. You work for your grandma. You work for your family. You work for your kids. You ain't making no other man rich. You've done some stuff that's so bad that you just put all your dreams out, all your goals down. You've been sleeping. You've been in a state of depression. You, you just, you've given up. You've quit. I need you to, I need you to pick that thing back up. I need you to pick it back up. It's okay. We all made mistakes. It's nobody, listen to me, it's nobody that hasn't made a mistake. You've been forgiven. Now you need to forgive yourself. All right? Because you're living in the past. You can't get what's next. You can't get your future because you're stuck in your past. I need you to let it go. Listen to me. No man is an island. You cannot do it alone. You do not have to do it alone. Get some help. All right, get, get, uh, I call it accountability partners, a board of advisors. Get the right people around you. Third quarter living is about the point of no return. Hear what I'm telling you? Third quarter living is about the point of no return. Like if you was going to quit, that's first quarter living, right? Maybe second, I'm not sure. But I know in the third quarter, look, you, you in it too deep. You too far in it. You too deep in it. You better, you heard me say it before, you better get a reward. I behaved. Like a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. Cut it off. Cut it off. Cut it off. Cut her off. So what? She gonna get out of two. Cut her off. So what? what? Bump your boss. Cut your boss off. Your wife needs you. Bump your boss. Your boss don't run you. Your boss don't care about your wife and your kids. You care about your wife and kids. Do what you're supposed to do. You ain't no boy no more. You don't need their approval. You talented enough. God made you. You got everything you need. I want you to spend all your energy on overcoming your weaknesses because behind every weakness you overcome is another level of success. And your goal should be the best human when you die that you could be. So your sons and daughters, when they bury you, should say, that's what I want to be like that. I'm going to take this legacy to the next level. Good times create weak people. Weak people create bad times. Bad times create strong people. Strong people create good times. My whole thing is leaders anticipate, losers react. If you can anticipate what's coming, you can really take advantage. If you wait till it hits you, you're in trouble. 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 The biggest problem people have is they think they're not supposed to have any. Problems are the fuel for growth. It's like if you don't have any problems, you're either a liar or you might call them challenges. It feels better. I understand that. Anybody who doesn't have problems is either totally asleep at the wheel or they don't have much of any kind of a life. But then there's fulfillment. And fulfillment is living what you're made for. Is it a lack of confidence? No, it's a lack of mission. I like winning. I like being the best at what I do. So I'm not gonna settle for less than that. Why would I? Michael Jordan making a thousand shots before you take a break. So you look at Jordan or you look at, you know, LeBron or you look at anybody who's the best in the world at what they do. And you go, aren't they lucky? But if you actually study them, you'll see they're doing things. They're practicing in private things that make them certain in public and they get rewarded for what they do in public. Yeah. And you got to do the same. When you just know you're going to mess up, it's not going to be perfect. You're going to forget that line that you really wanted to say, but just put all the energy on the audience. Everything starts to change. If you stay ready, you don't have to get ready. 
It's a shift in your identity. Every single day, six days a week. What matters? A few subjects, your body, because your energy matters. That energy is low. Everything I just said is worthless to you. Because when you're low energy, you don't use your full intelligence or ability. You need emotion. If you don't know how to master your emotion, emotions start wars. Emotion creates peace. Emotion gets your children. Emotion is what can make that business work or fail. And most people don't know how to direct their own emotions. Let me be conscious about feeding my brain things that are going to give me not only inspiration, but insight and skill and tools. 68% of the Fortune 1000 were started in either a recession or a depression. Well, the first skill you got to master to be great is the ability to recognize patterns. When humanity recognized the pattern of the seasons, the whole world changed. Because we went from hunter-gatherers trying to survive from place to place where we're exposed to everything, to wait a second, if we plant in the springtime, we protect in the summer, we reap in the fall, and then we hang on to some of that so we can live through the winter, that created communities for the first time, and then eventually cities and states and countries. So that changed the world. What will change a person's life is when you realize there's also a set of seasons in your own life. And so think of it this way. Zero to 21 is springtime. Things are easy to grow in springtime. You don't have to do that much. Growing as a kid happens naturally. But overall, life is supporting you. It's sending you, teaching you, sharing with you. Now, when you get from, you know, 21 to 41 or 22 to 42, whatever range you want to talk about, you now are in the real world. And now you go test what you learned in your springtime. So you start to learn, test, figure out what's real. It's an important stage of life. 42, 43 to 62, 63 is the power of your life. If you worked hard in the spring and the summer and you put yourself out there and you planted, it's a reaping time. It's a time when you really become a leader. And then if you're lucky, you go from 63 to 83 and maybe 83 to 103 and you have an extended final season of your life where you get to be the mentor, you get to share. You get to make a difference. And maybe towards the end of your life, people look out for you again if you looked out for everybody else. That's kind of the cycle of life. What if you're born in 1910? World War I ends. The world looks like it's a great place. New technology, cars, radio. And then what happens? An explosion of abundance, the roaring 20s. And so you're a kid. You're 14, 15 years old. And you're like, I can't wait to get a car to go. But what happened when that person hit the next stage of life, 19, 20, 21 years old? As they came of age, it's 1929. And suddenly, people are jumping out of buildings, total depression, dust bowl, nobody's got jobs. It looks horrific, and it was horrific. But did they get a break? No, when they turn 29, it's 1939. It looked like the whole world was getting in. Hitler was sweeping across Europe, bombing London. It literally looked like the world as we know it was over. This is what gives me great optimism for everyone watching here. Winter's not forever. No pandemic lives forever. Everything changes and everything ends. And the good news about winter is it's always followed by springtime. What follows the night? The daytime. What a cool way to set it up if you were God or the universe. The first thing I do every single morning is I go in freezing cold water. And when you jump in, it never feels good to go in, but getting out, you feel incredible. But I, I do it for a different reason. I do it to train my brain to say, when I say now, it means now. When I say go, we go. I don't stand there because it's cold and go maybe in a minute when I'm ready. But I always do it because I've trained my brain. This is how we work. And if you train your brain to do that every single day, then it'll do it on the more difficult and important things in life. But the essence of it is, I change my body radically, and I do three things to make sure that my brain is primed. And what I mean by primed is, most people think their thoughts are their thoughts, Lewis, and you and I know better. 
most people just don't understand that you are being primed all the time. And unless you prime yourself, you're going to be primed by the environment. So I want to take control of my brain. So I do three quick things. One, I take three minutes of those 10 minutes after I've changed my body and I focus on three different events in my life that I'm grateful for. I usually pick two big ones and one small one. It could be as simple as a smile on my daughter's face and it changes your biochemistry. Then real fast, I do this three minute process. It's kind of like a blessing. And then three minutes, the last three minutes are called three to thrive where I focus on three things I want to accomplish. And instead of thinking I want to accomplish, I see, feel, and experience it is done. I feel grateful. I celebrate it. And it trains your brain. So in 10 minutes, I'm done. Third thing that I'll do, I immediately send a message or a text or an audio message to somebody as a sincere compliment. And I don't go, dude, great job, or wow, you're cool. I say, hey, listen, I saw you on Tuesday with those kids, and I saw you take that extra 20 minutes. No one else did. And I just want you to know, I saw that. I thought that was incredible. So I'm always very specific mm. so they know it's not just some positive thinking bullshit call. It's sincerely doing it. It makes me constantly look for the good in the people I work with. Fourth thing I do is whatever I don't want to do, the most challenging part of the day. What's the story we all love? It's the comeback story. It's the comeback. It's the Rocky. It's that music where all of a sudden you step back up and you take control and rock. Good times create weak people. Weak people create bad times. Bad times create strong people. Strong people create good times. You're already in pain. Get a reward for it. So why would you go through all that pain and not get something for it? To put all those hours in and not transfer those hours to something else. It doesn't make sense not to recycle the pain and get wealth or a successful life or a successful spouse, like whatever, have kids, whatever it is. I was like, e, it can't end here. I've read the books. I've gone to the conferences. I went to the classes. I, I, I got the degrees. Like It can't end with just life is going to deal me this hand. You still have to do life regardless of how you come into life. If you come in great, if you come in poorly, it does not matter. You have to do life. And if you're smart, you do life on your terms and you don't let life make you do it on its terms. I'll do whatever it takes to keep this freedom. I'll do whatever it takes. So the first thing you got to do is you got to get out of your feelings. You know, you woke up, got into it with your spouse or your kids call with something that was going on or you were sick. And so I think for most people, they go wrong because they think it's a feeling when execution is a fact. There are going to be difficult times in your life. There are going to be times where you have every reason to make an excuse. Absolutely. But that won't serve you. And I look at Kobe and was like, yo, not you didn't necessarily live to be 100, but the time you had on Earth. You put in work and then you went and dominated one area and then you start coming over and said, now nah, I'm coming into some other areas, but I'm going to bring my greatness over here and I'm going to kill it. And that's all I'm saying to people. Greatness is in you. Activate it. Like I wake up every day with this. All right, I'm going to win a Nobel Prize. And it's not about the Nobel Prize. It's not about Norway. It is about if LeBron and Michael Jordan are playing for the finals and uh, Gretzky is playing for the Stanley Cup and somebody else is playing for the pennant like my my pennant is the Nobel Prize because you don't get that without helping millions of people get from one place in their lives, you know, to another. And so what I do is I, I figure out where you are and I dare you to come out of where you are to if nobody ever influenced you, where would you want to be? Like, what, what do you want? What do you want to do? Not what they want you to do. If you could dream, like, what would your best life look like for you? If you didn't have to impress your mom or your dad, if you didn't have to go to college because your parents went to college, like, what would you really do? And then if they can tell me, and if I can figure out where you want to go at that point, then I can snatch your current reality and help you to build a new reality to help you to get where you go. So for me, it's I got to get in here and I got to get in here. And if you let me into these two spaces, I can get you wherever you're trying to get to.
guys, you got to understand the opportunities that you have. You know, I've been to third world countries where it does not matter how early you wake up. It does not matter how long you stay up. It doesn't matter what your skill sets are. It doesn't matter. You don't have opportunity. You have people all over the world who are dying to get here, literally dying to get here. You have an opportunity of a lifetime and where much is given, much is required. Why you got opportunities? You got banks that you can get loans from. Uh, you can go online and sell stuff from online. Like you don't even have to have a store anymore. You a storefront. Like you can literally become rich from your watch. So it's like, yo, instead of you looking at everything that's not, look at what is. So absolutely, is there some stuff to complain about? 1,000%. There's a whole bunch of stuff I can complain about. It's a lot of stuff that I can be angry about, but I didn't realize how quick life was. Because life is short, I don't have time to focus on what's not. I've got to focus on what is, then get up and go get it. And, and, and for me, it's like, guys, I need you to understand where you are. We are looking for opportunity and we have it. And so if you can lock in, I need you to get focused. I need you to get locked in. But I'm too scared not to try. Like I'm too scared not to take the risk. The only thing standing in your way is you. That's it. Like, how is that possible? Like somebody uh, um, doesn't do what you think they should do and you go off, but then you give you a pass. Like you don't go off on you, but when are you gonna go in the mirror and check yourself? Like, why are you giving yourself a pass? Why are you giving yourself an out? But then you didn't finish school or you didn't write the book or you didn't do the album or, or you didn't go back to school or you told yourself you was gonna lose weight and you just let you just let yourself off the hook like, ah, well, you didn't do it for you. I'm saying, no, do me a favor. With that same energy you use to hold somebody else accountable, hold yourself accountable because here's the deal. You hold me accountable and I change. How do you benefit from that? Use that same energy you use on others. I'm not saying don't hold people accountable, but I'm saying use that same energy on yourself mm. and you'd be shocked how much further you'd be in life if you just punish us, if you put you on punishment. So for me, it's not, this is happening, this is happening, this is happening. I look at it, game seven. This is where the Magic Johnsons, the Larry Birds, like this is where the Michael Jordans are made. This is where the real ballers, this is where the real ballers come out. This is what I signed up for. This is what all the weights were for. This is the eating right. This is the getting up early, going. this is the trainers. Like, this is why I went to this school. This is why I got this coach. Like, this, I long for this and I live for this. When I see trials and tribulations, I go, it's showtime with a real Eric Thomas. With a game seven Eric Thomas. Who you stand up? Activate Grand Slam. Boom, it's out of here. So I just look at it as, hey, if you want to complain, go for it. I will rise to the level of the challenge. If it was easy, everybody would do it. Thank you.